Welcome to Grace Christian Center live this morning. Praise God. Let's open this service in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning that we all have listening ears and an understanding heart and seeing eyes to understand the truth of your word, to bring us into a place of victorious living in this life. And the whole church said, Amen. Praise God. Again, welcome, church, this morning to the live broadcast of Grace Christian Center. And we're going to continue along the lines of last week's message concerning the soul and the mind. And so uh, the, f- the fruitfulness of our lives does not depend upon the goodness of God, but really it p- depends upon the condition of our souls, and we're uh, paying attention in these next couple of services to our souls and to our minds, and because to change the condition of our soul is is our responsibility. It isn't God's responsibility. So man's soul is eternal, along with his spirit. They will never die. The soul is the very important part to man's life here on the earth. Seemingly along with the the mind, which we've neglected to give the rightful attention and rightful place over some past times, past history here, but we're going to catch up if we can here. So this morning, we'd like to uh, read Psalms 1 the first three verses of this of the first psalm which says blessed which means fully satisfied and in favor with god is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth, sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of god and in his law does he meditate day and night this is the key part of the verses of these verses. And it shall, and he, after he does these things, will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also, so also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So God is giving instructions here how man is to prosper through meditation. The key word here is meditate and what to meditate. Meditation is a process in which the word of God is moved from the written or audible audible form uh, to the heart. And this is the place of reality in our lives or where the word of God becomes real to us as believers, not mind, not not head, excuse me, but the heart, our lives, the heart. This is where we believe from. The word of God is given to us to form our beliefs, and our beliefs should govern our lives, what we really believe, where we trust from, the real us. The more we meditate the Word of God, the stronger we become in our beliefs. So in this day and time, there are lots of things that are happening that are designed to to shake our belief system, uh, to rattle us, to uh, steal from us, to rob, to destroy. It's all, it's a plan. It's, it's its own purpose. It's not accidentally. And so uh, this is not thinketh. This is not think in his head because here's what happens. God knows and you should know there is a difference between the head and the heart, even though they're connected to the mind. They're, 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 they're part of the mind, but they're connected but they're different. So we are seeking to receive understanding 
of how to change our lives. Okay? But the scripture teaches us that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's a clue for us. You want to know who you really are? It's how it's what you think in your heart. That's the really you. That's the real you to yourself. And that's the real you that you portray to other people. However, we find to change our lives, we have to change our minds. Because the mind is what guides the life, not the spirit. It's, we've thought this, I think, for a long time. But the, the spirit, uh, the mind leads, leads the life. It should be in conjunction with the spirit, but only when it's renewed. So we'll be looking at that some this morning. Because when we were saved, our spirits were changed and made new, but not our minds. So our or our souls were not saved. It was our spirit. We find that the soul, <clears throat> excuse me, that the soul contains uh, the mind and the spirit. But the new spirit does not change the mind. The mind hinders the spirit because the mind is part of the flesh. Now, this is the mind before the renewal process, before there's any renewing. Man was created in God's class to rule the world. But, of course, Adam fell and lost the ability and the authority to do so, was cast out of the garden to live by his own ungodly ability, was ruled by an outlaw spirit, which he gave the authority to, his authority to. Man needed help really bad. He really needed help. However, God has not abandoned man. God didn't abandon him. God had a plan before for man before God even created the earth. Okay, before the fall, God had a, had a plan for man. And to rescue man from this fallen state that he winds up in. And so God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to completely redeem fallen man, to completely change man from sinner to saint, to from ungodly and unrighteousness to godly and righteous by Jesus coming to the earth as a man and being offered up as a sacrifice and dying in man's place because of man's fall, someone had to die. The penalty had to be paid. The penalty was death. And man was not capable to save himself. And so God sent Jesus to save man through his death, burial, and resurrection. Not only did God send his son to save mankind, but he gave us, he gave us his thoughts and words to help us to live on this corrupt earth victoriously. And that's what we call the Bible. It was given for that purpose. Victorious Christian living on a corrupt, sin-filled, lost earth can't be done without the help of God himself with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. To accomplish this, a believer, a Christian, we must enter into the process of renewing our minds from the ungodly state to the godly state by changing the way we think, how we think, and what we think. And remember, that we do have the help of the Holy Spirit. We're not alone in the process, but we have to do it. He can't do it for us. We have to be engaged in this process. When we were saved or redeemed, we became God conscious. Remember this. 
This is something that uh, we need to understand that we became God conscious. That was the time when the Holy Spirit came into our spirits to remain forever and ever, never to leave. This, uh, this is a second part to remember, because as you hear a lot of Christians talk today, they, they either do not understand this or they have forgotten it because they're continually asking God to be with them. Well, the secret here is, is he can't be without you because he's sealed in us. The Holy Spirit, God, is sealed in us. This is something we should get into our belief system. This is the part where God will never leave. He can't because he's sealed inside of us. So instead of asking him to never leave us, we should acknowledge that he's there permanently and thank him for never leaving us. Now, God is in us, the body of Christ. So think about this. Get this little picture here. Think about this. God's in us. We're the body of Christ. And yet, there's a lot of people who think that God wants to punish himself. Because if he punishes the body, he's punish, punishing himself. The punishment has already been given for all man's sins upon Jesus on the cross. It is important to remember that God, God's spirit is sealed inside of our spirits. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 13, in whom also he also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's what took place and happened to you when you were redeemed, when you were, when you were, when we, not only you, but me, my, myself also, we should have developed, we, should have developed a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit sealed in us, learning to rely on his voice. However, if we have not accomplished that, it's never too late. We can become, we can get started even now. The Holy Spirit is in our spirit, and our spirit is in our soul along with our minds, which does the leading. We in life are led by our minds. I want to get this across. I've said it three times so far. We're led in our life by our minds. If we do not renew our minds through the meditation of God's Word, then we're going to have to contend with the unrenewed mind in our lives continually on and on and on, because the mind can't, the unrenewed portion of our mind is, has difficulty with God's truths. For instance, here's an easy one. I, this is when the scripture says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over shall men, not God, men give to you. Only a renewed mind can comprehend or accept that in, because the unrenewed mind uh, pushes back because it doesn't understand how it can happen. God didn't tell you to understand how it happened. He just says for us to believe him. He will accomplish. He doesn't fail. God's not a failure. This is a wonderful time for us to put the Word of God to test in our lives. This is why we must renew our minds to agree with God's Word in our spirits, to stop the conflict. We change our thinking. To change, in changing our thinking, we change our lives. Let's go back to the relationship with the Holy Spirit in our spirits for, for a second. He is there waiting for us to acknowledge his presence. And 
desires to communicate with and our we should be desiring to communicate with him he is there waiting for that we should develop the confidence in him to want his help in everything that we do everything we should rely upon the holy spirit to give us insight wisdom understanding we should as christian believers have a constant vocal and thought communication with the Holy Ghost at all times, all times. Never should we on our own try to live in this world without his direction and help. This can be developed if we want it to be. God wants it to be, but we have to agree. God has already enacted his part by the, by the beginning, at the beginning, by giving his spirit to us. This is all God. You and I could never do this. We couldn't demand it. We, we couldn't manipulate anything to cause God to give us his spirit. He voluntarily loved us so much that he gave us his spirit and sealed him in our spirits. We could not by our own selves dictate or demand from God this very action. It's necessary, it's needed, and God knows we need it. God himself has given to us his spirit. Think about that. The spirit of Almighty God, the creator of everything, lives inside of us. He gave him to live in us, to lead us, and to guide us into all truth. Oh, if we need this, we need it today. The world is all lies because it is under the control of the God of this world. You should never expect the world to line up with the Word of God because Satan is the God of this world, and we sure do really need to see the truth and hear the truth today. What can you really believe? But guess what? It's only going to get worse and worse and worse. Never will it get better. I always used to think that somehow, some way, something would happen and things would get better. Uh, it would just get, you know, get better. Always trying to compare today with yesterday and wanting today to be like yesterday and the day before and but one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me in my in my heart just as plain, and he said, what are you doing? And of course, you know, when you hear this, you, you know, you know, something you're doing is not right. And I said, I, I, I want it to be like it was. And he explained to me that it's going forward, not backward, and it's going to get darker and darker, and darker, and darker. The only light on the planet is the body of Christ. And if it doesn't shine its light, the darkness is surrounding everything. And so 2 Corinthians, a fourth chapter, fourth verse tells us, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So the ungodly have their minds blinded, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. There's a real reason why people have difficulty receiving the gospel right here. Satan, the God of this world, has blinded their minds. So much we see these days upon us, we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit more than we ever have. So let's get serious about our relationship with the Holy Ghost and develop that which we have such need of. Let's do that now. Start today. Seek, knock, and ask. The scripture says, and you shall find in Matthew 7 and 8, for everyone that asketh receiveth, us, and he that seeketh findeth, and he that knocketh, it shall be open to him. This is for us. This doesn't, this doesn't only apply to the, 
to Israel. This can apply to the believer also. God himself will never let us down, but we have to do our part. Our part is to believe. Our part is to meditate. Our part is to speak the truth. Our part is to depend upon God. Before we do anything or go anywhere, even in our speech, as we think, talk to the Holy Ghost in us and wait for an answer, he will guide us. By now, because of age ability or the distance or the time since you were saved, we should have been developing this relationship. But as I said earlier, if you haven't, it's not too late. You just start talking to him now. He's there. He's waiting for you to start acknowledging his presence. Before we close today, let's go back to James the first chapter, the 21st verse, where James is telling us how to save our souls. James says, wherefore lay apart all filth and if and superfluity of naughtiness, those are the things that are hindering you, lay them aside. Receive with meekness, that's with desire, with want to, the un, the uh, engrafted. That's the, the engrafted word is the one that's going to do the, is going to bring the help. It's the energy. It, the engrafted word is the one that goes into your heart, which is able to save our souls. It's the engrafted word that does it. So let's look at this in the amplified version. So get rid of all the uncleanliness and all that is that remains of the wickedness and with a humble, a desire, a want to receive the word of God, which is implanted actually rooted in your heart, which is able to save your soul. And the way you root and implant the word into your heart is through meditation. It's not through memorization. It's not through uh, uh, seeing how many verses of scripture you can memorize. That, that's, not, that's not implanting the word. That's, that's just memorizing the word. That's in one section. That's in a part of your mind that isn't effective to your heart. You have to continually meditating on this word so that you move it from the head or the mind thinking into the heart thinking, into the part that's connected to our spirits. And we receive meekness, the engrafted word, which is able save our souls. It's the engrafted and rooted word in our, in, our, uh, uh, in our soul, in our mind, which is a part of our soul. Remember, our mind's divided into two parts, the head part, the conscious, and the subconscious. The spirit, the, the part that's connected to our spirits is the subconscious. All of our lives, our head, all of our lives, our head has been trying to catch up with our spirits. It's lagging. It's lagging behind. It's not keeping up because it, it, it requires meditation on our part to bring our heads in line and catch up with our spirits. We're not, uh, we're not in charge of every thought that comes into our minds. But we are responsible for the ones that stay. We change our lives by changing our thinking. So if you're willing to change your thinking, this is how you change your thinking by meditation that we studied, we, we read up in the first Psalm. We change our lives by changing our thinking. What we think about and continue to think about over and over and over. Now, we have a tendency, we went over this a little last week, we have a tendency to do this almost unconsciously. When something happens to us that is injurious, uh, embarrasses us, uh, hurts our feelings, or uh, is 
is um, something that is traumatic to us, any kind of incidents, we have a tendency to continually think about that over and over, voice it. We think about it. We medit we're meditating upon it. It's what we're doing. And, and it's not leaving. It's staying and it's building inside of us something that we don't want. It will hinder us. It will start to develop. It will develop us into something. It will develop. It will develop us into what we don't want to be. It will develop. It will develop us into a poor old me attitude. It will develop us into an attitude where we we start thinking that life is not worth it. See, it's some steps that develop into. Uh, thoughts of suicide and bringing into depression. Well, who did it? We did it by not paying attention. We did it by meditating on the situations that we should have released and let go. We should, if someone hurts you, it, you don't have the right to hold it against them, regardless of whether they were wrong or whether they were right. That's not the point. The point is to, to save your soul and to keep you out of difficulty, you have to release it. Let it go. The hurt's gone when you do that. If you keep holding on to it, the hurt stays because the more you rehearse it, the more you think about it, the more you talk about it, guess what? You keep stirring it up inside of your emotions, which is in your soul which has to be, the releasing of it is your responsibility. It's something you have to do. Let's say someone uh, deliberately did it. They deliberately hurt you. It doesn't make, it's the same thing. You release it. See, when you release it, you give the Holy Ghost the opportunity to do his part. If you hold on to it and keep meditating, and keep thinking about it, thinking about it, rehearsing it, rehearsing it, building it up. So you're making it stronger. You're building it up. You're keeping your emotions stirred up with it. And it's developing in you something you don't want, but you don't understand that. I'm telling you, by the word of God, turn it loose. Let it go. When you, when you, turn, when you say out of your mouth, I release it. I hold no grudge. I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm going to let it go. Even though, you, you can even say this, even though I believe they did it on purpose. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Let, just say they're walking in all the light they have. It, it, I'm sorry for them. Because you're building inside of you a greater person. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You're changing the way you think in your heart when you're doing this. That's what takes place. You develop these things in your heart and it starts to create the real you. And the real you, you don't want to be the this person that is on the doorsteps of depression all the time, but you're doing it. You're doing it because you won't turn these things loose. You have to, you have to turn them loose and let them go with the words out of your mouth. Say, I release this. I release that person. I release that situation. I will. I refuse to harbor it. I refuse to keep it. It's not mine. I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to turn it loose. And knowing in your heart when you do this, that you give the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Almighty God, opportunity to work on your behalf in, in this given situation. This is how we implant the word of God to our spirits to save our souls. This is, uh, it's not a code of conduct by which we gain favor uh, or, or, or we gain salvation or God's grace. The Bible is a book that has been given to man to change his thinking and to save his soul. This is the way to develop our belief system in line 
with the thoughts and the words of God. God knows that what a man thinks in his heart is who he is. The Christian life is the most glorious life a human being can ever experience. Think about this. We're going we're gonna to have to make a definite change in our thoughts pertaining to life. Okay? Um, let, me redo, let, me, let me say this all over again. The Christian life is the most glorious life a human being can ever experience. Think about that. That's a true statement I've ever made. But it is not always a bed of roses, okay? No, nobody promised you this. Here's what happened. God has provided salvation from spiritual death, sin, sickness. But he did not save us from our bad attitudes, our bad choices, or problems of the world. He did give us the Holy Ghost, who, who, if we allow him to, can guide us in these problems of the world. While we can never improve upon what Jesus has done for us, we must learn how to work out our salvation and live in a successful, victorious way. In Philippians, the second chapter, verse 12, wherefore... My beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, this is the Apostle Paul writing, but how much more in my absence. Now he said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And this is how this is done. Every believer is called, listen, every believer is called to a life that is abundant. Anything below that, you're missing it, okay? The abundant it, it increase, the, 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 the life that the believer is called to is increasing and always expanding. Words like growing, improving, expanding, increasing are the vocabulary of God's abundant life. Abundant life is always about moving forward. This is the calling that this church functions through. We were, we're called supernaturally to cause God's people to rise up and live in this abundant life. This is what this is all about, living in the abundant life. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus Christ said this. He said, the thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Don't ever forget that. That's functioning around you. If you don't stop it, which you have the ability to do and the authority to, if you don't stop it, it keeps encroaching and approaching and encroaching and approaching. It just keeps pushing, pushing, pushing in to, to steal, rob, and kill. Okay, but now listen to what Jesus said. So sometimes we, we spend a lot of time on that first part, and rightfully so. But we can't, let's not forget the second part, which is, the, to me, is the major part. He said, here's why he came. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Okay, now listen, that word life, is 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 not barely get by. That word life is not survive. That word life is not hold on uh, till the end, barely getting through life. No, no, that, that's not what that word is. That word in the Greek is zoe. Okay? Remember, this is the year of dreams and visions. Satan heard this at the beginning of the year. He heard this declaration. He knows what it is. He heard it also. He is, he is there, and he comes to steal. He heard it. 
He's the thief. He comes to steal and to rob and to destroy. What's he trying to do in the life of the believers of Grace Christian Center? He wants to steal the ability for you to develop your vision. And he wants to interfere with your dream, which you have to protect, which you have to be serious about. You have to understand God's not going to protect your vision, and God's not going to protect your dream. He's given you the Holy Ghost and His Word, and He's given you the ability to cause it to come to pass and flourish, but you have to do it. Now, remember, God will not stop him, Satan, from interfering. God has given the body of Christ the authority to render the powers of darkness helpless. He's given us the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus that's been given to the body of Christ to stop Satan in the lives of the believers and in their realm and in their authority. Here in John, Jesus said life, not just any old life, but a special life. The Greek word is zoe. It means absolute life, the purest life, life in its very essence, the God kind of life. Listen, do you really, do you really evaluate yourself this morning? Do you really believe that your life exemplifies the God kind of life? Or can your life be advanced? Can your life be expanded? Can your life be better? It's up to you. You have to decide. See, God's already said, Jesus said, I came that you have this kind of life. You have to, ex you have to accept this kind of life. Believe this kind of life. Declare this kind of life. Make this kind of life come to pass in your life by meditation on what, what brings this life about. He did not say, Jesus did not say, I come so you can survive. So that's what everybody's trying to do now, is just survive. Now, he didn't say that. Nor did he say, I come that you should make a living. Most people can't even make a living. That's not what he said. That's not what he came for. But if you settle for this, then that's what you get. You get what you settle for. No, Jesus said, I have come that you can have the God kind of life, the absolute very best life, the purest kind of life, life in its truest form. This would be our vision for, this should be our vision for 2020, that we have, that we have the God kind of life, and we're not going to let some demonic force, some spirit of darkness, interfere and steal it from us. It's been given to us. This should be our vision for 2020, the God kind of life. Jesus is saying, I came to put the God kind of life in your life. That is every part, Zoe, God's life. God's life in your family, God's life in your children, God's life in your job, God's life in your bank account. Jesus said he came to bring life into your life. So, hey, rejoice this morning. Give God praise. Give God thanksgiving that Jesus Christ has brought God's life into your life. Let's, let's, Let's close this service this morning with this, with this prayer and understanding. Uh, first of all, again, I want to thank you all for joining with us. Cheryl and I and the pastoral staff here at the church, thank every, one, thank, thank every one of you for your commitment to the body, your commitment to the church, and thank you. Uh, you know, these days that we're, that we're involved in presently, uh, you know good and well, this is not godly. This is not a God event. This is, this is designed to do a number of things. And uh, 
it's going to fail. It's not going to succeed for the church. Now, I don't know what about. I don't know what about the ungodly people. I don't know what about America, and I don't know what all these. But I do know that the body of Christ is exempt from whatever it is that this virus is supposed to be accomplishing. The body of Christ is exempt from it. It's not going to push us into some kind of hole someplace in us hide. We just ministered this morning. The life that we've been given is not just to survive, not just to get along, and not just to make a living. We should be advancing the God kind of life in our life is a real life, and it's available. So let's pray this morning in closing the services. Uh, join with me as we uh, pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for coming to give us Zoe, the God kind of life. We want to thank you for dying on the cross for us, for paying our sin debt, for freeing us from spiritual death, something we could not ever, ever do for ourselves. We're truly grateful and thankful that you loved us so much when we were against you, when we were enemies, we were lost and undone. You died for us and you saved us. And we acknowledge the shed blood, and the stripes on your back. We are thankful for the Holy Spirit that has been given to us to guide us in this life, this Zoe life. We're truly grateful to you, Father, for the Word of God that you've given us that is to govern, that is to uh, guide and govern our thinking and guide and govern our lives. We give you praise and thanksgiving for your word. And we thank you. And we thank you, Father God, and we believe that the people under the sound of my voice, that each and every one of them are healed this morning and delivered from the attacks of the powers of darkness in these trying times. We want you, Father God, we pray that you open their eyes to see and their ears to hear, and the that the truth, that the truth may come into their hearts and lives, that they never, that they never, Lord Jesus, believe the lies of Satan. May they never be deceived because this is the day of great deception. People are being deceived all around the world. But Father, I pray this morning for the people of Grace Christian Center that they never be deceived into believing the lies. Who are the lies of the, of, from the powers of darkness who are manipulating mankind in these last days? May the joy of the Lord continually be our strength. May we recognize and understand we are the body of Christ more today than we've ever recognized and understood in our life. We thank you. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to share the good news, the gospel, through this medium, through the internet, through this broadcast today. May this bring great fruit. May the seeds that we've sown today, Jesus himself said, the sower sows the word. We have sown the word. We thank you for the water to follow up and then for the harvest to come. We thank you that this, these words today will bring a fruitful harvest in the lives of everyone that hears, not only the people at Grace Christian Center, but the people around the world who hear this gospel, who hear this message, may it bring great, great, great harvest in their lives. And we give you the praise for it, and we thank you.
in Jesus' mighty name. And again, folks, we thank you all for joining with us this morning. Trust we were a blessing to you. Trust we uh, encouraged you and helped to build you up in these last days. In Jesus' mighty name. And again, I say, God bless every one of you. In Jesus' name.